Hi, Fenville families. It's Mrs. DeRue again. Sorry about the glare. I can't get away from it. Anyway, um, yesterday when we read Hate Zipser, um, Hank was trying to decide whether or not he should give Emily back her lucky socks. So let's find out. Eight reasons I should keep the monkey socks and not give them back to Emily. Number one. I have a right to finally win, don't I? Number two, Emily is so smart. She doesn't really need the socks. Number three, it really isn't right to keep them, but Emily has to understand I'm the one who needs them. Number four, it really isn't right. Number five, boy, it really isn't right. I'm starting to think that Hank knows that it's not really right to keep the socks. Come here, Sadie. Come here. We're all home and she doesn't quite know what to do right now. Sadie, come here. Sorry. Oh, I really want it to be right, but it isn't. Why couldn't it be right? Number eight, because it isn't. Oh, do I hate being good? Why can't I be Nick the Tick? Not only would he have not given his sisters the monkey socks, he would have burned them and buried them the ashes in the sandbox at school. I walked around and around my bedroom, making a ring in the carpet from facing. I know I should give up the socks, but I can't bring myself to do it. No matter how close my door was, I could still hear Emily crying up a storm because her precious little red and pink socks were lost. Wait a minute. Yep, there it is. She's on the hall linoleum, pounding her fist and kicking her feet. Who is she kidding? She couldn't fail if she tried. Okay, okay, I can't take it anymore. Here goes nothing. I flung my door open, ran into the hall, and threw the socks at my sister. One landed right in front of her face, and the other fell on the middle of the back of her head, so it looked like she had a third pony or a third pigtail. Pigtails fit her perfectly. They go so well with her snout for a nose. I went back to my room and slammed the door. Wow! I didn't know I had so much power. It felt as if the walls shook. My teeth shook. My mom came running out of the kitchen. Is everything all right? What's going on? She asked. Emily didn't answer. I didn't either. I was in my room walking in that circle again, trying to figure out how I could be so stupid as to give up the socks. What were you thinking, Hank? I kept saying over and over again. Henry, my mom called out. You get out here this instant. Maybe one day I would be able to not listen to my name, to not march into the hall and face the firing squad. But today was not that day. I threw my door open, went into the hall, and said the shortest sentence I could think of. What? I said, not looking at either of them. Don't what me, young man, my mom said. Where exactly did the socks come from? First, they have to pick the cotton to make the material, and then they dye it red. Now, once it's out of the dye, Henry, cut that out right away, she said in a stern voice. When my mother uses Henry, no joke in the world can calm her down. Okay, I started again. It was a mistake. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, big surprise, Emily said. Emily, not now, Mom said. I wasn't paying attention because I didn't want to keep Papa Pete waiting, Emily. So I grabbed the first pair of socks on top of the laundry basket. We went to have our catch in the court courtyard because I wouldn't be caught dead in those monkey socks in the park. Except they made me pitch better than I've ever pitched before and I really, really need them for tomorrow's game. But no, Miss I do everything right would never let me borrow them. Boy, are you right, Emily interrupted. See, what's the use, I yelled as I ran into my room and slammed the door again. A millisecond later, I opened it and screamed from the door jam. I think that stinks worse than you stink. It's Emily Zipser and that's that. I kicked the door closed. It slammed so hard, it was as if it was shouting to everyone, keep out of my room, keep out of my life, and I really mean it. I was so mad. There was steam coming out of my ears. I flopped down on my bunk bed, put the pillow over my head, and started to scream. I would tell you what I said, but if your parents read those words, they would take this book away from you and tell you that you couldn't read it until you were 18 and a half. Ooh, that's some pretty bad stuff. 
Even through the pillow, I could hear my mom's voice. Stan, I need you here. I'm busy, Randy, my dad called back. I found a hair in my earlobe, and I'm pulling it out with the tweezers. That can wait, Stanley. Oh, no, it can't. Dad, keep doing what you're doing, I thought. Apparently, he either got the hair quicker than he expected, or he gave up and searched for others. Because ten seconds later, my dad pushed the door to my room open. What's the problem, he said. There's no problem. Emily gets her way as usual. She gets got her monkey socks, and I won't be able to pitch for the rest of my life. Hank, I have no idea what you're talking about, my dad said. My mom stuck her head into my room. I'm calling a family meeting, she said. <laughs> Why not? I was still screaming mad. Let's all sit around and talk about how great Emily is. As a matter of fact, I can't wait. Why don't I just start right now? Calm down, Hank, my dad said. Let's talk this over like reasonable people. We sat down at the dining room table. We took the same places we sit at dinner. My dad at the head, my mom in the one nearest to the kitchen, Emily on her left and me on her right. Or maybe it's me on her right and Emily on her left. Wait a minute, let me figure this out. I know that the pinky finger on my left hand is a little shorter than the one on my right, but I'm on the other side of the table, so I have to stand up, turn my back, and then see where the short pinky finger is. Yep, she was on my mom's left. Emily put Catherine down in the middle of the table. Who invited the lizard to our family meeting, I asked. Catherine must have known that I was talking about her because she stared at me with her beady little eyes and then stuck her tongue out at me as if to say, I'm here. What do you want to do about it, zipper boy? Hmm. I don't see why we need a family meeting, Emily began. That creep took my socks, and they're my socks, not his socks. Hank, your turn to express yourself, said my mom. She believes in expressing yourself. I didn't take her socks, I said. They must have known I needed them, and they wound up on my feet. All I was asking is to wear them for one day and one day only. Not even a day. Just for two hours during the Olympiad softball game. I don't see why that's such a problem. Um, because those are the same two hours that I'm participating in the Brain Buster competition. And I need my lucky socks to lead the team on to victory. Well, what about my victory in the softball game? What victory is that, Emily? The perfect said. It would take more than monkey socks to get you to do anything right. That's enough, you two, my dad said. First, let me say, I don't believe in monkey socks bringing luck. Of course, my mom chimed in. We all know there's no such thing as a lucky charm. Although, my dad said, I do have a silver mechanical pencil, the one I got for being a six-year subscriber to the Time magazine, and I do seem to complete my crossword puzzles faster with that particular pencil. Stanley... This isn't about your crossword puzzles, my mom pointed out. Oh, yes, you're right, Randy, he agreed, running his hands through his hair, which was already in its usual messy condition. Trust me, Dad, I pleaded. I need them more than I've ever needed anything in my whole life. No, not as much as I need them, said Emily. My dad held up his hand, letting us both know that we were to stop talking. He looked out at us over the top of his glasses the way he does when he's thinking of an especially hard word in his crossword puzzle, which this. Well, he began, since we're talking about a pair of socks, a very clear solution presents itself. There are two children in this family. There are two socks in the pair. We are one family and one for all and all for one. Are you following my line of thinking? No, I said, you lost me after well. All right, let me try this, he continued. Two kids, two socks, two divided by two is what? How should I know, Dad? The conversation was driving me crazy. Check back with me after sixth grade. Maybe I'll know division by then. Two divided by two is one, said Emily. I looked at Catherine, and I know this sounds weird, but she shot me a look as if to say, even I knew that, dodo brain. I couldn't say this out loud, but I was wondering if I could be dumber than a lizard. Stanley, that's a wonderful solution, my mom said. Each of the children gets one sock. It won't work, said Emily, the cheerful. Let's put it to a test, said my dad. 
My mom was holding the socks that she had scooped up from the hallway where Emily tossed them in her hissy fit. She handed one to each of us. Emily put hers on her left foot, or maybe it was her right. I could do the short pinky finger thing again, but you'd probably stop reading, so let's just say she put it on a foot. I was a little nervous because I remembered the last time I put a sock on. Her mad cow iguana attacked my ankle. Can I... Can you put Catherine in her cage, I asked Emily. And have her miss this, said Emily. I rolled my eyes and put the sock on. Good, said Dad. Now, let's test this out. Emily, what is your best subject for the Brain Buster competition? Geography, Emily answered. Fine, my dad said. Emily, name the two longest rivers in the world. Well, that's easy, she answered. The Nile and the, and the, oh no, I only know one. Let's try another question, said my dad. What's the largest state and what's its capital? The largest state is Alaska and its capital is, is, oh, I can only answer half the question. See, Daddy, it's because I only have one sock. Hey, give me that, give me that sock immediately. Emily dove for my ankle, but I was quicker than she was. She landed on the carpet, clutching at the air. Do you think Emily really can't answer both of the questions, or do you think she just wants to get her way and get both socks? And so she's pretending she doesn't know the answer. That's what I think, but I don't know. Now it's my turn to test out the one sock theory, I said. I grabbed a softball in my glove. Come on, Dad, science in action. We all took the elevator down to the courtyard. Everyone except Catherine. She doesn't like elevators. One, she freaked out and bit the button on the fifth floor. We had to have my dad pry her off. If you come to my building, you can see your teeth marks in the but on the button yet. When we reached the courtyard, I went to my place and my dad stood in the meadow water drain that we were calling hem home plate. I did my wind up just like I had done with Papa Pete. The ball left my hand and flew, but instead of flying into my father's glove, it took off like a wild thing, spun around and lodged itself in a metal gate that leads to 78th Street. Try again, my dad said as he pried the ball loose. I went through the windup again and let the ball go. This time it sailed through the air and was heading for my dad's glove, but then just before it got there, it took a sudden turn and headed for the clay flower pot on Miss Seed's window ledge. Bam! The next thing I knew, the flower pot was in a million pieces on the courtyard's mess. Mrs. Seed stuck her head out the window. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Seeds, I said. I didn't mean to hit your flower pot, but I couldn't help it because I only have on one monkey sock. Mrs. Seeds looked kind of confused. We'll replace the flower pot, Miriam, my mom said. Hey, didn't mean to break it. Sorry. I turned to my dad. You saw it with your own eyes, Dad. Proof that I can't pitch without that sock. And I can't remember geography facts without the sock, said Emily. Those socks really are lucky, I said. I agree, said Emily. It was the first time ever that my sister and I had agreed on anything. Therefore, I need the socks, I said. I disagree, said Emily. There we were, disagreeing again. At least we were back to normal. Do you think those socks really are lucky? I don't know. How are they going to solve this problem? Do you have any suggestions? Hmm. Guess we'll have to find out tomorrow. Hey, take some time to play outside today. Have a good one. Bye.